In this chiller training, I want you to leave understanding search troubleshooting for a Y case and trophical chiller, what it's going to look like, how you can address it. All right, how you doing? I'm Holden Schamberger with HVAC Time and Chiller Academy. I specialize in chiller systems. Today, we're going to be talking about surging for a Y case and trophical. And this is going to be a cut down version of this. There will be a full length version at chilleracademy.com under the YK course and in the side of the troubleshooting section. In the full version, I'll get into more details and some of the lead up to surging, some of the conditions, surge maps, stuff like that. But for the purpose of today's video, you're going to get all the basic details you need to have an understanding about what do you do when you deal with a YK surge. So with surge, what we're really having to manage is lift. As long as we can manage our lift, for the most part, we're gonna be able to manage our surging conditions. Now there's always gonna be limitations, but lift is our biggest component that we can basically do the most with. So starting off with high condenser pressure, we could either be dealing with a, a low or high GPM or water flow through the condenser barrel, GPM. Now, Let's go look at some charts real quick. That'll give that that has the flow data for the evap and condenser pressure. So if you if you want to see every machine is specifically engineered and they're supposed to be put into the uh, sales uh, uh, table, what the actual lift across the or the dp across the, the evaporator is supposed to be or the condenser so that's giving you a very useful value but in terms of just you need you want to know the raw gpm that's necessary and then try to do some math to, to work it out from there that is where you can get the gpm data for your barrel and at that point you're just looking at what what evaporator code or condenser code do you have in this particular case be condenser code uh, what condenser code do you have, and then what is its correlating uh, flow rate? So the thing to keep in mind, low flow in the condenser, you're just not going to move enough water to properly carry the heat away. With low flow in the condenser, you're going to be seeing a really high temperature deferential. With a high GPM, you're going to be seeing a low temperature deferential across the barrel, but the reason high is a problem is we get into a laminar flow state. We're not actually creating turbulence inside of the barrel the way that we need to. And it is preventing proper heat transfer. Next condition uh, would either be fouled tubes. So uh, with fouled tubes, it's, you're not going to have proper heat transfer. You're going to be running high head pressure. Overcharge. If you need to determine that or get a basic idea of where your charge is, look at your sight glasses under load. Uh, if your liquid level sensor is calibrated properly in your set point, you should be running about a half glass uh, on your condenser side, which is going to be about three quarters to one inch above the subcooler plate. Uh, it's a, those will be in pretty close proximity to each other. It, at that condition, if that condenser liquid level is at the correct set point and being controlled, then your evaporator sight glass should be about half glass as well. And if you are significantly above that on both, or let's say that you're running half glass on your condenser side, maybe it's controlling properly, but you've got a really high evaporator level in the sight glass on that side. Very good possibility you could be dealing with overcharge, which at that point you'd see elevated evaporator pressure more than likely. So if we don't have an overcharge, then a failed PRV will be our next culprit. So with a failed PRV, uh, we either aren't able to choke the refrigerant off properly, which is probably going to be the, the more common failure. And that's going to force us to run a higher head pressure or a higher uh, lift. Okay. We're going to have a higher lift at that stage. And we're not going to be able to unload the way we need to to get ourselves back below that surge uh, line on the, on the graph. It's gonna push us up into this little region here when we really need to be down here to control that line. If our uh, metering device fails, say MD metering device, that's gonna create a condition where 
we may be backing refrigerant up into the condenser where, where, when we don't need to be. Kind of a, a very similar thing if our liquid level sensor fails. So these two will go very hand in hand. Either way, if, if the metering device itself won't open the way it needs to and it's stacking too much refrigerant and it'll be starving the evaporator at that point. So this will kind of play into both sides. Very similar to a liquid level uh, failure as well, your liquid level sensor. So if the sensor or the metering device, either of those go, you stack more in the condenser, you're also starving the evaporator. That's going to create a high lift and that high lift but it's also going to be a high lift and you're going to see a reduction in total flow because the refrigerant is going to get trapped more in the in the condenser side we can't feed as much refrigerant into the evaporator which is going to reduce our total flow rate through the impeller uh, while also increasing lift so it's a double negative and that's going to push us straight into a surge condition so from a high condenser pressure perspective these are the things that i'm going to be looking at the most that are going to pertain to dealing with a high condenser which if i can keep my condenser pressure down keep my lift down then i'm going to be able to keep the surge conditions at bay now that could also mean that i've got high condenser water Okay, and then we'll get into that in the next, uh, when we start talking about low pressure uh, on the EVAP side, because when we have a lower load and we're not able to move as much volume through much as much flow through that impeller, that's going to have an impact. But if I've got proper load on the evaporator, let's say at least eight degrees or so, and... Now, eight degrees split across there is what I mean. Then I'm really going to be looking at these conditions first for what my uh, why I'm I'm running a higher head pressure and why I'm pushing that surge boundary as much as I am. Now moving into the evaporator side of this, these first two are actually going to stay. And essentially, instead of high pressure on the condenser, we're going to be talking low evap pressure so gpm is still going to be a major issue for us same kind of principles as on the condenser if it's a low gpm we're just not moving enough water to get heat into there and at too low of a gpm we don't create turbulence the way we're supposed to there's just not enough force and flow happening to allow proper turbulence not to mention just the volume of water is just not enough on the same side of that, on the high side, we're moving too much water through and that's going to start to push us into more of a laminar flow because the, the force and velocity behind it. Coming back to this same chart in the engineering material, it's got evap and condenser side by side with their codes. So you're just going to be referencing whatever code you have. Go see what your GPM is. Fouled tubes, while the evaporator, because it's, it is for sure a closed loop, doesn't typically get opened as often at most applications, uh, it still has to be considered as a factor. Things happen, service repairs. We cannot just rule out that there's not fouled tubing, which a high approach value could help you determine that. If you know you've got a good GPM, uh, but you're still having approach issues, well, you you might really want to consider a possible foul tubing. Now, undercharge, which going back to the metering device failure uh, scenario, you know that's going to starve our evaporator. But either way, even if say those are working, but we we're maintaining level in the condenser about where it needs to be, but we cannot get our level up in the evaporator, which is what an undercharge would start to look like you're not going to be able to maintain evaporator level but you'll 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 still be able to have condenser level because that's what we control off of if you can't get either one then you've definitely got a big issue like if, if your evap level is too low and your condenser level is also too low and neither of them can satisfy yeah undercharge anyway undercharge is going to push your pressure down it's going to create a higher lift condition while also dramatically reducing our volume so we have to keep in mind that it's lift and volume or flow rate through that impeller that plays a huge part into where we're at on the surge graph 
and when we're going to push over that surge line. Oil migration would be another factor that's going to impact our evaporator very heavily. So if our inductor system is not functioning properly, uh, whether we have a clogged uh, uh, dryer filter on the inductor line, we have a, uh, the, the solenoid valve has failed, whatever the condition may be, maybe we have a port that's gotten plugged up for some reason. If we are not controlling the oil in the evaporator, it's going to push our evaporator pressures down, and we're also going to have higher approach values. So that comes back to this, you know, fouled tube scenario. And with higher approach values, you know, we're, we're going to be pushing that, that lift boundary. And our final common condition is going to be a low load scenario. So if we're having to run at a lower load, we, we may have very limited control of our lift because of our evaporator and our uh, condenser water that we're running at. So one thing to keep in mind is lower loads means we're trying to step the motor speed down, which is these lower lines. And we're also having to choke off our PRV more in order to not overshoot our set point or, or over, over cool. So that means we have a low flow. We're reducing flow while also typically reducing speed without being able to do a lot to, to reduce our lift, which that's where low load becomes really touchy because I, especially with a YK, I deal with surging more in low load states than I do anything else. And, and the reality is if we, if we have a, a well-designed system, meaning the evaporator and condenser water and our GPM and our, our ability to cool that water, then our, our lift will remain fairly consistent throughout a lot of the year. I, it won't have to change a whole lot. But our ability to increase our flow rates will help us push off of that surge line. Now, we still have to, do, to think about choke conditions, which that's not the point of today's lesson. But we will get some distance off of that surge line. So that's with load. Now, when we start dealing with low loads, it, that lower volume through that impeller just pushes us right into that surge territory. And we're just, we're just trying our best to tow that line, unload the machine as much as we possibly can to maintain operation and maximize efficiency without just completely pushing over the edge. If this really helped you and you found this very beneficial, please go check out chilleracademy.com. I have a YK troubleshooting and principles course there just for that, or also have an introduction to chillers course as well. If you need help on the, on just on the fundamental side and understanding all of these terms, what they mean, how to use them, what the different variables are that applies to all chillers, not just YK. So I've currently got both of those options on the table for you. You can go to chilleracademy.com to check that out. The full version of this video is in the YK Troubleshooting and Principles course. So if you'd benefit from that, go check it out. And keep in mind that anybody enrolled in Chiller Academy is automatically included in the, uh, the Chiller community group inside of the Academy. And that's a place where you can get troubleshooting support. You can get course support for your lessons if you have additional questions, mentorship. Whatever it is, that community is there to help you and support you in your journey and in your path. With that, MTT, make the time for your family, for your spouse, for your kids. They really need you. It's busy season. Let's, not, let's make sure we're making time for them in the process, guys.